Okay, team, I want you to take one minute. I want you to read this question involving explicit phonics instruction, okay? One minute on your own, go, one minute. Unpause. All right, um, again, basic question, right? One sentence question, a one sentence answer. So, so it's still a pretty basic question. These are good practice. I'm not so sure what test this came from. It's either the 90 or the old Rika. I was not able to locate it, but it's a good question. So, so we're gonna do it. Um, I'll, I'll read it since it's very short. It says, which of the following statements best explains why most young children require explicit instruction to help them distinguish the phonemes in spoken words? And then we have some options. Let's just clarify some language in the, in the question. Young children. Let's just say now that's referencing kindergarten, okay? Require explicit instruction. So we're talking about teaching phonics, uh, doing instruction, which is in a, we're teaching something like phonics in isolation. And in our and we're isolating a specific phonics pattern if it was phonics instruction, right? So in this case right here, it would be a cluster, constant cluster that they, the teacher would be working on, okay? Where we have three things, and this is a constant cluster where we have three things and three sounds. Okay, so why does the teacher, why would uh, why would we do uh, explicit instruction uh, to kindergarten students uh, to help them distinguish the sounds and words? Well, if you think about it again, like the word street, in that opening piece, strut, we say it real fast, strut and street, right? That strut has three sounds. A very, very easy right to, to uh, gloss over one of those sounds or drop a sound, right? Maybe you you say street and you and you drop the R, right? And so when it comes time to decode, maybe you're like steet, you're dropping some of the sounds. So you want to make sure that you explicitly um, practice, you know, hearing all the sounds in a word. So that's like phonemic awareness. You practice that stuff and help a student get really good at hearing all the phonemes in a word and segmenting and blending the sounds in a word because later on they're going to have to decode that a word like this and you're going to want to make sure that they're able to hear all the sounds in that word right does that make sense now when we look at the answer choices um, the answer is c and it says in normal speech so that means in everyday words like straw stretch street these are everyday words strong string everyday words right that a kindergartner would have had exposure to. The phonemes in words, some of them are in those words are co-articulated or blended together. So here in an everyday word like street, we have three, three sounds that are blended together to make the stress sound. So you might have to take some time, slow that blend down, practice it with your students to just to help them not only get it in their oral language, but to help them hear all the sounds in that blend, strut, street, so that, that when it comes time for the decoding process, they'll be, they know it, they've already learned that blend of the STR. They'll be able to match it up and decode it when it comes down to letter sound correspondence. And some, some sounds are co-articulated, like the ow in cow, right? Ow, there's a blending of two sounds, ow. So it's kind of hard to hear because when you say ow or oi, it starts one way and changes by the end of it, right? Ow, you notice your mouth and jaw change. So this again, could be tricky. You'd wanna make sure that you explicitly teach this and make sure a child hears how that sound evolves as you, as you say it or changes as you say it. Because there's some sounds in the English language that are co-articulated, set together or are blended together. And it might be tricky for a beginner reader. When we explicitly teach, uh, do explicit uh, instruction involving sounds like say it and move it, that type of explicit instruction, like I'll just write down say it and move it, right? Remember that? That type of uh, explicit phonics instruction, it's going to help with letter sound correspondence because in everyday speech, sounds and words are co-articulated and blended together. Okay, team, this one could have gone in a... Uh, in a uh, phonological and phonemic awareness section on the class, but I wanted to put it into the phonics section, okay? Because um, 
uh, I wanted to include it in here. And I want to highlight something. Uh, we mentioned before that Say It and Move It can be turned into a really easy um, um, explicit phonics activity, right? If they say it, move it, and what was that last piece? Say it, move it, spell it. Well, if we do say it, move it, spell it, remember that activity? Now we have something that's explicitly teaching phonemes in a word and practicing letter sound correspondence and, and encoding. So that is an activity, say it, move it, spell it. That's going to be an explicit phonics instruction activity that also builds on phonemic awareness. So that could be incorporated if you saw students struggling with this stuff. Okay. All right. The answer is C. This is a great one. It is, uh, I'm, again, I, I, uh, I don't, pardon me, I, I don't have the test. Couldn't find it. But this is a good practice one. You get a lot of a lot of ideas going on here, normal speech or everyday words or tier one vocab, blends, sounds that are co-articulated like ow, right? Or um, blends like STR, clusters like STR or blends like ST, that might be tricky to hear. Um, regular and irregular words, regular words are words that we can decode like uh, cat. Irregular words are words that are have an element that are not decodable like in the word what, that vowel sound is neither short nor long. It's considered irregular. Environmental print is a print that we see around us every day. Uh, uh, most students have exposure to environmental print, whether they know how to decode it or not. They, they see signs. They see stop signs on the street. They've had exposure to a certain level of environmental print. 